After this video, I can officially diagnose you as a licensed uh, amateur optometrist. So here's the game. First, ask your mom for a meter stick. Mom, can I have a meter stick? Sure, here. So I've got this meter stick and I put it on my eye. Now this is always a little bit dangerous, but you wanna not put it through your eye, but just next to your eye. And then hold your finger next to the meter stick, see? And run your finger down the meter stick closer and closer and closer until you can no longer focus. Notice this hurts. Trying to focus on something really close hurts. That's cool. And then also, so write down where it is that is the absolute closest that you can focus. For me today, it looks like I can focus at, let's check that out, 13 centimeters away. So that's called my near point. My near point is 13 centimeters. That's cool, hopefully yours is a little bit smaller. As I age, that will get further out because I have to strain to get to focus that close in. Turns out that when you relax your eye, <clears throat> those ciliary muscles relax and the lens gets much, much flatter. And so you will be able to focus on something that is nearly infinitely far away, which is pretty awesome. You have to work much harder to make the lens bulby. Let's get a picture of an eye up here. Eyes are kind of, I don't know, what, brown? Where is my brown? Dang it. All right, so maybe your eye is green and the eye is pretty much a sphere, and then there's this lens thing in here, and you've got these muscles here that can change, of course they're all the way around, they can change the dimension of this lens, and they can change the dimension of this gloppy thing that's on top of the lens, it's all kind of gross. But the general idea is if I make an axis here and I say here's an object that I want to see, I won't be able to see it unless I can cause an image to form exactly at my retina. I need an image to form right there because the retina is sort of like, it's sort of like the sensor for your eye. This is where the information gets encoded and sent via a little pipe that's pretty cool. This goes to the brain and then you can think about what you see. So yes, when your uh, little brother told you that, <clears throat> was that your little brother? I don't know. Maybe it was your sister who told you that you see stuff upside down and your brain flips it back over again. That is completely correct. On the back of your eye is an inverted image of everything that's happening in your life and your brain keeps track of all that and sorts it out for you. Maybe that happened when you were little and thinking about why things weren't upside down as they seemed like they were. Or maybe you just got used to it. Maybe upside down is right set up. I don't know. You think about that for a little bit. But I've found my near point and now I wanna find my far point. So people who don't have any problems with their vision, people who don't have any problems with their vision can look really far away, stare off into the distance and see stuff. That's awesome. And you know, I mean, <clears throat> maybe you presume, <laughs> unless you've seen me in class or you've uh, seen the momentum videos, you probably think I'm a pretty attractive guy. So you'd be like, yeah, that Doc Schuster, he's a pretty attractive guy. But it, can you imagine me with glasses? Look at this, this used to be me just last year. I used to wear glasses and I walk around like, hey everybody. And so, I mean, I dealt with that for many years and I know it's weird to wear glasses and I'm sorry if you have to wear glasses, but, I wore glasses because I was myopic. And that means that I couldn't see far away. So if you are myopic, sad face. I wish you could see far away. Try the meter stick trick and put the meter stick not in your eye but next to your eye and bring your finger further and further away from your eye until you can no longer focus on it. And that will define your far point. And the good news for me is my far point today is infinity. And hopefully that's the case for many of you as well. I had to get glasses when I went to freshman year in college. I was sitting in the back of the classes and they were big classes and I couldn't see the board. So I realized they needed glasses. So that probably happens to many people and I'm afraid that it might happen to you too. Dun, dun, dun. But you can get glasses to correct that. The idea of someone who is myopic, the idea is their far point is here, for instance. We could just define some random location to be their far point. And if they're looking at something that's beyond the far point, the problem is the rays from that thing come in and they get focused too early. So these rays are all like, and they form an image right here. So one thing you can say to people who have glasses and who are myopic, not everybody, with um, 
with glasses is myopic, but most people with glasses who are, you know, 20 to 30 to uh, 15 or something, people those age almost Usually, uh, what do I mean to say? I don't quite know, but I would bet that probably 90% of people, ask an optometrist, but I bet 90% of people with glasses who are not yet 50 have, um, have myopism, something like that. <clears throat> Again, ask an optometrist. You can tell them your eye's too big. So the problem is if the eye were smaller, then this lens would be perfectly sufficient. So something happened where your lens didn't quite grow enough when you, I don't know, hit 17 or something. That's what happened to me. And your eye kept growing and suddenly it could no longer focus out there. So you had too much correction and you can't relax your eye enough to make this lens correct less. So what you need to do instead is you need to get up in here with a uh, seafoam green. What kind of lens do I want? Do I want this to converge closer or further away? I want it to converge further away. So I need a diverging lens up in here. Someone who's myopic has a diverging lens. Problem is, you can't start a fire with this. So people like us, it's no, it doesn't make any sense when you land on a desert island to hit us over the head and steal our glasses, because we still can't start fires. That sucks, because this won't concentrate any rays. Dang it. Okay, but if we do this, then what we'll be doing is we'll be causing the, uh, oh man, if the image is, if see, uh, sorry, if the object is here, what we can do is use this lens to create a virtual object through the lens, which then focuses right here. And we will get a nice, beautiful focus because of the lens right on the retina. So what we're doing is we're creating a virtual object for this lens by virtue of the first lens. We move the virtual object into the far point for your eye. So the eye now believes that there's an object within the far point. You're moving something Wow, you're moving something like a tree that you want to see that's 90 meters away within your far point, which might be 80 centimeters away. So now the image of the tree is only 80 centimeters away from this lens is causing the image of the tree to be that far away and you can now see it. That's awesome. Here, there's another type of problem. You may think that myopism is terrible and awful, but the true freaks are the people whose eyes focus too much. So let's get one of them out here. And if their eye, wait a second. No, I mean their eyes don't focus enough. So if your near point, what if your near point is uh, 55 centimeters? Can you imagine holding a book 55 centimeters from your eye? We will all get there, probably. Your eyes generally get less and less tough at getting this lens to get really bulbous like this, and those muscles have to work to do that, and your muscles get tired and pathetic as you age. So what I need to do if I am hyperopic, check this. If you focus too late, now you've got an object here that's close, and the problem is the rays coming in here will converge back here. These rays converge back here, and we're finding that, uh, well, you're going to have a fuzzy image on your retina because the focus is way back here. You need to help these converge. So you put yourself a little bit of corrective optics right in front. What you're doing when you put a converging lens in here is you're helping them to converge sooner. So after this converging lens, they're coming out a little bit closer here, and they're able, with your pathetic eye, to focus then right here, and you do get a nice happy the image on your retina, and that's awesome. So we need a converging lens in order to help people who cannot see things that are close, and we need a diverging lens in order to help people who cannot see things that are far away. Hmm, anything else I should say about that? Well, we can do some calculations, but I don't think this is the right video for that. Uh, oh, I guess what I should say is if this is your near point, what do I mean to say? Yeah, no, 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 I want your near point to be here. The reason you can't see this thing if you're hyperopic is because um, you are 
it is too close to you compared to your near point. So the action of this converging lens creates a virtual object that's out here at your near point or just beyond it. Hopefully it makes it right at your near point. And then you can still focus on it. So you wanna hit these people over the head and steal their glasses because this will start a fire when you're on a desert island. Also, when you look at them, you notice their eyes look really big through their glasses because it's a magnifying glass at that point. You're looking through a magnifying glass at these people's eyes. So they have cool Coke bottle glasses and they're like, eye. Wow, that's a big eye, right? And you're thinking that when you look at these people. Awesome. I don't really know what this is, but it looks pretty cool. And they are um, <laughs> spooky looking, really. Um, sorry if you are hyperopic, I feel for you. I tell you what, I will tell you a little story. When I was about, I don't know, 32 or 33 or something, doctors took me in and strapped me down and sliced off the top of my eyes. They went like this with a knife. They went and left a little flap and then they peeled this back. And that was pretty awesome because I was awake and I was watching them. And then once they had this peeled this back, they did this with both of my eyes. The other eye was over here and they just, uh, oh, there was this little uh, lensy bit and stuff. And they sliced off the very top layer and peeled that sucker back also. There was a little bit still left here. So it was a flap, it was a nice eye flap. And it, once inside my eye, they used a laser to vaporize parts of my eye, which was kind of creepy because I could smell my eye melting. It was actually um, breathing. I was breathing my eye. Then <clears throat> they flapped it back down and put some glue in there. Maybe it was just water, I don't know. And they used a brush. And they brushed my eye for a good while until maybe it looked like a broom. Yeah, they were just And then I could see. The next day, in fact, I could see 2020. It was even 2015. It was amazing. So you should consider getting laser eye surgery because for me, it was an absolutely awesome thing. But consult with your doctor. Don't make any decisions based on YouTube videos. That would be silly.